because I did that, now that's uneven. <sighs> Do your measurements beforehand. Welcome to DIY with Herman James. I'm Herman James, and on today's episode, we're replacing my old gate fence latch with a brand new one, because the old one sucks. Like I said on the intro, I'll be uh, really just updating the uh, gate latch I've got on my side yard. I'll also be adding a spring to it so it doesn't auto shut. The one that's on there has been on there since I bought my house six, seven years ago and how long it was on before then, I'll have no clue. But the gate doesn't always shut very well and it's one that has like a pull string on and I'll show you in a minute. And the string's always breaking off. So what I've done is I have picked up a whole lash system here. We'll have links in the description below for all of this. This is uh, supposed to be able to have the little push button guy here, have the spring here that should be able to attach and then automatically close the gate when it's left open. All right, so the latch setup here, you can see lock from here. This should be the uh, push button area as well as this guy here to sit through this to allow me to use this on the outside to push the gate door open. These will sit on either side, just like that, of the fence post itself. That should sit behind this as well. And this should be the push rod that goes in between everything. And then you have to cut this to length uh, to fit where it needs to be. Everything should sit inside these guys. And it should be relatively easy to do. We'll find out how easy because I'm not that smart, and if you've been watching this for a while, I mess things up quite a bit. But let's go take a look at my side yard to see what I've got out there now. So for my gate, this is what I have currently. And this was done by the previous homeowners. You can see it's kind of questionable. It's a cable with some strings around it, but you can also see they've already tried a lock like this with a push through. There's the holes here and everything in there. So it, it should be able to get done pretty easily. I shouldn't have to drill through anything and I should be able to kind of have it in there just like it is there. You can also see the videos of this on the Amazon view, click link below again. But let's get all the stuff off and get the new stuff on. Gate latch and everything off. Uh, time to see where the uh, other ones are gonna sit on here. All right, so let's see what we can get for this guy here. Looks perforated, apparently. I'm not strong enough to figure that out. Easy to install and adjust. Requires only one drilled hole. Right or left hand mounting. Tough polymer construction. Will not rust or corrode. Screws. Some instructions. Definitely be a look at those in a second. Latch for the interior. I don't know why they have to be like Kawasaki green, but it is. I'm assuming for different length 4x4s, four four, so who knows. Outside for the gate itself. And this should be how uh, this guy's gonna hook up. Since it's going to be on the other side, it should be this way. And I'm gonna assume because of these little holes up here. And here, it should be attached this way. Then attach the gate, and we'll go that way. We'll figure it out. Uh, not really supposed to be using power tool for this, 
but I'm lazy, so I'm going to. And I'm just going to uh, win. And I'm just going to turn it down to a three. Three should be sufficient. One's gonna be a little bit too loose. Two's not my favorite, so three will work. Sure, why not? All right, so the instructions tell you to insert the dowel, I can't see it with my shirt here, the uh, dowel through the fence post. Got a problem. The previous owners, like I showed you earlier, already drilled some holes through here. So it looks like they have had one of these before. But as you can also see, they did it pretty wonky. So because of So because of that, I'm going to have to drill out a bigger hole or round out the hole really so the dowel can get through because it, it there's no clear path for it to go. It's all shot sideways. So I think maybe they might have just put a cord through there or something. But let me drill this out real quick and we'll be right back. Instructions say to use a 5 30 seconds. I've got 5 30 seconds here. Um, this is why 3 works. Uh, for everything I'm using in here, tools and all of that, I'll have a description below. Or excuse me, a link in the description below for everything. Um, the bits are nothing super fancy. They are a, a very generic Black & Decker set. Not the best, not the worst, but they work for me. Previous owners did such a horrible job at just jabbing in there with the normal bit you should have used. I couldn't get it to work right, so I got an actual, I don't know what these are called, flapper bits, I don't know. But now you can see exactly what I did, because now you can see through the hole. You actually see all the way through it, which you couldn't do before. So let's get back to checking out the thing's gonna fit. So it says to insert the dowel through the hole in the fence post. Since this part is supposed to be the part, not the top part, this part, it's supposed to be the part in the other side. Boom. It gets through, it fits. Looks like it might be a little bit long and probably wanna put a screw in that to tighten that thing up because it's just weird, like, why? why? Why would they do that? So let me get a screw in that, and I'll take care of the rest here. All right, now that that's fixed. Spax bit, Spax self-tapping screw. Sorry, you can't see my face. Okay, so they're saying to use this guy put in flush with the end of the gate, and then wherever the excess is on this post, chop it off so since I've got two of these that came with it one really really long and really really short this one actually is just shy probably about this much of the gate so what I'll do is I'll insert it into the 4x4 find out where I gotta hack it and just take a little saw and done and done now the reason they're saying this is because these pieces here it's gonna sit inside of that. And this is gonna sit inside of the actual four by four, as well as this. So when these are set on there, we're good to go. And I'm a dummy and I put that on wrong. Put that on the left side. And now I've gotta undo that again. So I just use the flapper bit here, 
scored where it's got to get scored to here. You can see a little guy there, maybe not so much. So I'm gonna go cut this off the saw, put it back in here. That's what we can do. And with a little bit of editing, I'm back and it's cut, and you can hear the police everywhere around here. It's all right. Who knows what's going on? So I'm just gonna double check this fits in the door or fence post. Seems about perfect, so let's go on to the next step. Just push it into place here until it snaps. Or snap. Now it's just time to attach it, bolt it in. Uh, then attach that, bolt it in. And attach that, bolt it in. So let's get to uh, my favorite part. Tool time. All right, since this needs two screws there, one screw there, one screw there, I've got all four that I need, and we've uh, cranked up the drill. So let's hope this all fits. And it doesn't. The holes they drilled were not in the right spot. Just means I need to get it a better spot. Well, due to that one, I'm not working out very well. I drilled that guy because it worked out well because the instructions actually tell you to use the uh, guide on the other side of this to see if it works and set up where it's got to be. This works perfectly fine in here. Um, it says a 5 8 excuse me, 532. A half inch bit though has got to be used to cut through because when you push for this, it needs to have that space in there. So let's get the other side attached and we'll take care of this. It's like an extension's gonna wanna be used for that for the what I've got here. Seems to be right there. Seems to be working okay for that. I'll show that side. That attached to there. I did it high. That's how it's bolted here, but I don't have a, a setup for it over here. And this is why you always check on both sides and measurements, you know, measure twice or three, not four times, um, cut once because I drilled a new hole where there's already a hole and I don't want to drill another hole below a hole. So instead I'm doing what you shouldn't do, just adding another piece of wood to this already kind of rickety gate from the previous homeowner. So told you, I'm not a professional. So now that works, you can see the fence is a little wonky on the sides, and that's not so much because of this, but because of that. So what I'm going to try to do is take these out, prop up the gate, and pull that back in. And then I'll probably have to redo all that over there. Let's find out. that now that's uneven <sighs> do your measurements beforehand all right 
find out. Oh yeah, hell yeah. And then it still pops up like it should. Oh man. Very cool. Very cool, so much better. And now that that's on there. Oh, that's awesome. Now I'm gonna try to attach the spring. That's how well it's gonna work. All right, so this uh, easy access packaging for this self-closing spring gate says to pilot drill some holes and to set it up. I'm not gonna pilot drill anything, which as you saw has worked out well for me on how I do things in this world. So let's see if I can magically guess what these instructions are telling me to do and see if I can do it right. I probably can't. All right. So I'm gonna try to see what I can do here. I think I'm just gonna see if I can map this right here. Um, and if I can use a stick, that'd be great. And then I'll pull this guy into here a little bit and then tighten it down. So let's see. That'll do. That will do, I like that. So this fits up a little bit here, but push it back to shut. It stands open. A little bit of wind right now. Close. So maybe one more turn. Alright. Again, there's a little bit of wind in here. Yes! That. That is what I've been trying to have for years. The shitty built gate. Everything's bad on here. But that. That makes it all better. That's fantastic. Okay, everybody, so we got the gate done. Everything is here. I mean, yeah, I should have measured more and done more, but that works. The adjustability for here works. It's a solid now. It's like a gap through here. I didn't have to buy new hinges, but we did have to do one of these. This spring is pretty tight. But this is really cool. I, I don't think anyone understands how really cool that is. Automatically, it's gonna shut through. And again, a little wind right now. Boom. Solid. Push the button here. And good. If I'm gonna lock it, got a key here. Boom. Lock. Can't get in. Yeah, it's a flimsy gate. You really could get it if you want to. Again, here. I'll look there. I'm in. The biggest negative reviews people have about these particular latches is, as you can see, they can only lock and unlock from one side. So if you lock from the outside, you have to unlock from the outside. If you lock from the inside, you have to unlock from the inside. But that, understandable. These aren't really super fancy locks. However, these cost more than my house locks. Um, house ones, I think you can get for like 25 bucks. Uh, these were like $75. Is it worth it? For me, it is. It's just because it's accessibility. I don't have the cord hanging down anymore coming through. It's just great. Spring, I think it was like 15 bucks-ish. Um, as you can see, with my slew of things I've had to do, I have lumber laying around. So that's how I was able to do that little add-on piece up there. This was not easy access packaging. As you can tell, it didn't work out. The tools I used, Milwaukee razor, what we got here, the spacks here. I've got my Ryobi circular saw. They're great. I bought these 
for some of my first power tools, big power tool sets. And then I got the Milwaukee's, love these. Um, I've also got some DeWalt bit sets as well as Milwaukee sets and Black & Decker sets. I'll have links for all of these in the description below. But I think that's it for this episode. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for me, please. It really helps me out. Leave some comments. Uh, let me know what you think I did wrong or right. We know I did a lot of things wrong on this. But if I can do this, you can too. And it's simple. Hand tools, really. I mean, I didn't need a power tool. But I like power tools. So I use them. I'm not Chris Fix, so there you go. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, hopefully, for sharing. Can't wait to see you on the next video and be in your eyes and ears next time.